Good morning and welcome to Tuesday. <sighs> hope everyone is well, really. I hope everyone's doing fine. I am capable of thinking about other people in this pandemic other than my own uh, narrative at times, believe that or not. I am capable of thinking of other people. So, I've got so much in my mind this morning. My mind's like completely full up of loads and loads of things. But I'm going to start with something that really um, touched me last night. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the process that's going on in my group before I head up the road to start work this morning. I'm finding myself against the clock this week a little bit, which is great. I like feeling as if against the clock. So last night uh, I went round to the grocery store to get some uh, essential supplies. Uh, essential supplies, right? Uh, put that in inverted commas. I went to Morrison's to get some essential supplies. And as I was coming out of Morrison's with my essential supplies, there was a local newspaper uh, right as you exit the door, a local newspaper called the Lanark Gazette, right? And on the front page of the Lanark Gazette was taken up by what was screeds and screeds and screeds of information around um, my minister of the church, which I have went to for 10 years. Good morning, everyone. So I see the headlines, minister, minister, whatever, right? Minister, whatever, right? And I read a couple of lines of it, right? Because I'm, really, I'm not really big into reading newspapers, right? But basically, in a nutshell, what the minister, who is my minister, right, uh, of the church of which I have went to, he has been condemned for uh, abusive language on the midnight service or something like that, right? Some crap, right? And um, it really stimulated me, right? I found myself getting really stimulated about it without actually knowing what was said. Now, I thought he had said something really ridiculous, right? And I never knew. From the headline, it looked as if he had said something really ridiculous, right? So what I found myself doing, right, that... that seedy part of myself if you like you know that dark part of myself um, I went in and I wrote an email to the other minister in Lanark Louise and I went oh, what has he went and done that's what I wrote what has he went and done and Louise went he wrote something about a line that hadn't been edited and said oh that bloody line hasn't been edited right and then I went to write Louise another email and I stopped myself and I went this has got nothing to do with Louise. Why am I asking Louise about what he's done? Go straight to him, right? So I saw he was online. I was like, hoy, what have you been up to? What's happened or whatever, right? And um, this is what I want. This is, what I, this is the point that I'm wanting to get across. Why are we so seedy? in wanting to crucify, chastise, belittle people for making a mistake and very seldomly do we rejoice in their success right he said bloody they never bloody edited that we seem to forget that ministers and politicians and everything like that right uh, Nicola Sturgeon has not wore a mask uh, such and such disobeyed the Covid laws right has anybody that's watching this that's in a position of authority ever used offensive language. I use offensive language all the time, right? It's like it's like it's like my second language, right? Offensive language, that's the way I speak. And um, what part of our psyche, what part of our mind is it? that loves bad news, that loves negative news, that now wants to go on a witch hunt for a local minister, right, that's been absolutely bursting his balls, right, through lockdown, like, insanely, like, actually insanely. I'd like to say that to him. I'd like to give him any bother for that more than the fact that he said bloody. I'd like him to turn around and say, do you know what, switch your computer off for a couple of days, right, just chill out, right, stop being in sacrifice to the community, look after yourself for a wee while, right, where did they put the headlines in the Lanark Gazette that he took time when I was two feet away from Catlin Bridge? Thought about jumping off Catlin Bridge.
that he held my hand and recited scripture. Where is he being prayed for the successes that they do? No, because we are all so dark, we're all so seedy, we're all so undercuffed and manipulative people that we get some kind of fornication out of reading about the failings of other people, right? And right now, that's the last thing that I want to be reading about somebody. So, day two of our coaching group was today, uh, I think we had 12 people in the room or 13 people in the room today, which was absolutely such a joy. And really what we were talking about today was about those shadow archetypes, those shadow archetypes of our mind, those manipulative parts of us, those parts of us that aren't effective to ask for what our needs are because we don't know what our needs are and we've spent a life burning up energy, going round the back door to, to manipulate a world to give us what we think we want. But does any of us really know what it is we want and then how do we find the courage to ask? How do we stand and say, I'm needing a hug? Rather than me walking into a room because I'm feeling vulnerable and say I could be doing with a hug right now, right? I turn round and recite some crappy story, making everyone else wrong, making myself look like a victim, probably have a wee greet right, in a manipulative way to get somebody to come over to me and put their arms round about me and support me in my minute of need, right, instead of just actually turning round and saying, is there any chance you would be able to provide this for me? So we were thinking about that this morning a lot and we were thinking about how effective is that and how much energy is it actually taking to... Uh, prop up those constructs if you like how much energy does it take to read that newspaper article about a minister that swore you know what I say to that fuck it right? Um, there's far more important things that we need to be focusing on right now than a minister that said bloody at a Christmas service right? and to me if a minister can swear it makes them human right? and where have we forgot that prime ministers fit their players yes they're supposed to lead and yes they're our example and yes they are the top of the crux for a behavioural change model to work in our society right but why do we put anything on a pedestal because the minute you put anything on a pedestal it's doomed to fall right it's setting it, setting it up for failure before it even starts so um, I find that pretty ridiculous and uh, that touched me last night and really, I want to use my energy to focus on... Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, I'm going to use my energy to focus on the highest possible good that I can today and not buy into any negativity. So somebody's coming to chat to me. Guy with his dog. He's coming to talk, right? So I'm going to say bye-bye. Have a great day.